Hello and happy Monday if you're watching this on the day it's released. We have a new envelope to open in the watercolor advent calendar. If you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, I bought a 31 days of watercolor advent calendar from Denise Soden and we've been opening the envelopes every day this month in July. Also in this video, I'll show you what I sketched on my trip away and we need to do some painting. So ironically, I packed up all the little dot cards that I opened Wednesday of last week. I can link that video in the corner for you and left them on my desk here, but that's okay. I didn't have time to paint anyway, or I didn't take the time to paint on my trip anyway, but I did sketch some stuff. So let's open today's envelope and then we'll get into the sketchbook. All right, let's see what's in day 24. This envelope is bigger and it's folded over like that. I thought maybe for a second there it was too accidentally taped together, but I think it is just a bigger one. Yes, it is, okay. Ah, that's because it is a bigger art print. Ooh, a five by seven. It's a lynx, oh wow. That's beautiful. Today's prompt is an easy one. There are countless things we could paint that conjure the idea of something soft. What would I choose to paint? Probably a chinchilla. Regardless of the species, if you are painting a soft animal, make sure to use a soft brush that can help you soften your edges. Only use hard edges in the areas of your painting that require the most detail, like eyes and noses. Nice tip. So the prompt is obviously today soft. Well, that is very nice. So yeah, here's all the dot cards I packed up for myself to paint with while I was gone and left them here on the desk, darn it. <laughs> there they all are. And I'm going to use this one for sure today. This is the graphite gray. And what I managed to get done on the trip, it's back here somewhere, right here. Just a few sketches. So I sketched a can for recycle, a little floating envelope going into the mailbox for envelope, a little building in the distance for distant, and an olive. So I figured we should paint these up real quick today and I think that'll be fun. So definitely going to use the graphite gray. We could maybe squeeze in a little green earth in the olive, but that's not quite the color I'm thinking of. But we have all these dot cards that we've received. This is the dot card we received on the day for distant, I believe. And then I still have this tundra pink that I don't think I've used in anything. These are all core colors. All right, well, let's just get started with the first one and go from there. So you can see I'm going to use the Schmika's Graphite Gray for this one. And as Jen mentioned, this is apparently an actual graphite paint. And I could feel the difference in the way it spread on the paper. It was really interesting. I encourage you guys to try it out. It's a lot of fun. However, starting this painting made me realize and wonder if I shouldn't maybe find some small paintings that I could do as warm-up exercises before starting my more bigger serious paintings because I felt a little bit unprepared to start painting today and that was a strange feeling, but I knew that feeling would pass, so I just persisted, kept painting, and of course it got better and that feeling went away. But man, I'm thinking it would be awesome just to dedicate a sketchbook probably to warm up paintings before starting a big project like the Redstone Castle that I am doing, the Hanging Lake one and some of the others, because some paintings, if they're super precise in my opinion, don't necessarily require a warm up, but, oh, well, maybe, maybe that's not true, I don't know. But like if you're doing a building and stuff, I don't really think that would require a warm up, but something that you maybe want more loosely done or something with a lot of trees and softer stuff in it, I think would be great to have some kind of warm up. And then I started out with the Simi Art Brush, but then I went ahead and switched to the Princeton Aqua Elite Round Size 8 because that Simi Art Brush is a lot softer. It's made out of a different material, obviously, than the Princeton Aqua Elite, and it was holding a lot of water. The tip bends on it a little bit more because it's a softer brush. So I just had better luck with this more synthetic brush here. And I did try switching over to the Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolor Brush Synthetic Sable Round Size Zero, but I have trouble using really tiny brushes sometimes because I just have trouble getting the paint to come off of them and figuring out you know, the amount of water versus paint and without it getting too thick. So I probably need to practice with some little tiny brushes a little more thoroughly. And then I thought I was done using the graphite gray, but I decided to go ahead and use it 
to color in the mailbox because it's the perfect color for a mailbox. Plus the paint is so fun to use. You hardly use any of it. That dot card is still nearly as full as it was when I first got it, even though I did use it in every single one of these four paintings you're going to see today. And so there's that burgundy red ochre. I believe that's what that one was. And the buff titanium from Core and the other colors here from Core. So I got to use them all. I really like the idea of this envelope floating into the mailbox all by itself. It was just kind of fun. And I ended up using the green earth here to put some grass down at the bottom just to ground it a little bit. Debated on any kind of foliage in the background, but I decided I liked it as it was. And I didn't intend to use just the dot cards for all of these paintings, but every time I went to think of the next color, I'm like, well, I'll just try this dot card. It's already out here. I really did intend to get my other palettes out and add in some additional colors, but guess what? It's not necessary. This had all the colors that I needed in these dot cards here. So it was great. It was a lot of fun. And that green earth is a little bit stronger than I thought it was going to be at first. And you can layer it up and get it a little bit deeper. Not too much though. I think for some reason it doesn't layer a lot, but it layers enough that you can get a depth that's pretty neat. Out of all of these dot cards, the only color on them that I didn't use was the Cobalt Violet by Core. It was really fun to have these, I think there's three different brands here, Daniel Smith, Core, and Schminka. And the Core definitely was some of my favorite paints to use because they just go on the paper really nicely. They spread a lot and they're very pigmented. So you don't have to use a lot of paint. And that Daniel Smith Burgundy Red Ochre I think that was its name. Sorry if I got that wrong. I don't have that paper in front of me to double check that name. But anyway, that one was also pretty nice. And the Schmincke colors are beautiful. They just take a little bit more work to get to, to use them. And that graphite though, that, wow. I just, I know I keep telling you guys, that's a really unique paint. So go try it if you can, if you have the means. Now here on the olive, I had my doubts, like I mentioned in the beginning, that I could actually paint it the way I wanted to with these colors, but I thought, you know, I think that core buff titanium is probably gonna save me. I ended up grabbing the tundra pink to add in some shadows. There you can see I'm putting in the buff titanium. That kind of got me the depth that I wanted in it, and then I pulled out the graphite gray for the shadow, and then I decided, you know what, that's a great color to put in the olive itself. So that olive is made up of Green Earth by Schmincke, Graphite Gray by Schmincke, Coors Buff Titanium, and Schmincke's Tundra Pink, plus the Pimiento is the Coors, what is that? I think it's the, trying to find it, Permanent Scarlet by Core. All done. There's Recycle, beautiful, haha. <laughs> Using Schmincke's Graphite Gray. And then Envelope, I like that one, that one's fun. Here we have Distant. I thought about lining this one with Sharpie or a Micron, but I think I'm gonna leave it. I like it soft, maybe. And olive. I didn't think I could paint an olive very well with just these colors, but it worked out way better than I thought, and I like it a lot. Well, I have missed a few prompts here and there for World Watercolor Month. I'm already four behind just catching up with these four. That would be Risky, Fragment, Local, and Soft. I do have an idea for local. I'm still going to paint that one, but I'm not gonna be in a big hurry about it. One thing that I've loved about World Watercolor Month so far is that it makes me paint more often because I have a reason to do it. And Doodle Wash puts out these prompts every single month anyway. It's not just for World Watercolor Month. So if you find yourself needing inspiration, go ahead and check out their prompts any month of the year. As for me today, I'm gonna go get some other stuff done around the house and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye for now. And there's a kitty. Hello. Ah, hey, hey. <laughs> and the dog farted. Pew. Oh, dog fart.